after last night's game, wanted to dial up our friend who covers this uh, team and this sport in the city of Tampa from the Tampa Bay Times, Rick Stroud, back here on the show. How are you, Rick? How the Bucks lose this game? <laughs> well done, Rick. Very well done. Uh, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well, Rich. My high register isn't going that high yet. But, uh, boy, um, you know, they Tom Brady holding four fingers up and not knowing, um, you know, what Downer was clearly, even though Bruce Arians basically said today, well, you'll have to ask him. But we knew what Downer was. Oh, boy. Um, it, it's, you know, just, just as sort of the – uh, the, the 2020 season so far for him and 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 it was it was unbelievable i mean he had you know the ball with 248 to go in the lead they couldn't you know couldn't run any clock then he had the ball again um with plenty of time fourth and five you know takes a shot down the field doesn't know what down it is i mean they've got a lot of problems brady isn't really very high on the list of them um but uh but that's one that that you know they're gonna regret i think down the road and we'll see how much it hurts them in the future, but it's a beat up football team, Rich. And, um, and yesterday was, was not a good performance by anybody, including the coaching staff. Okay. So that's a lot right there, Rick. Let's take it. Let's take it one at a time. And I think you're spot on that Brady is not, you know, high on the list of issues as to why this team is three and two. That said, I was, you know, high on this team. I still am. I picked them to win the Super Bowl. Um, because I thought that Brady, with this offense as it was constructed, not just roster-wise, but also with Leftwich and Arians being of one mind and body and attitude, that Brady would be the perfect vessel for it. But the fact that there was no on-field workouts except for whatever Tom was doing on his own with players, even though they weren't supposed to, that it does look like they're out of sync. It does look like there is just um, they're still in some sort of mode despite the five touchdowns that we saw last week. What do you think, Rick? No, you're absolutely right. And, and one coach described it to me as every week seems to be a jigsaw puzzle. And, and what the problem right now has been, really since the start of the year, you mentioned all the things, you know, not having the offseason, but it's injuries. You know, um, they haven't had a healthy Mike Evans with a healthy Chris Godwin. Now O.J. Howard is gone for the year. Um, you know, you, you, you had guys playing yesterday that, um, you know, when we're making their first catches in the NFL, you know, uh, he's throwing to Tyler Johnson and Cyril Grayson and, and guys like this. Um, you know, it, it's been a grab bag and, and they, they weathered it, you know, when they were down 17 a week ago or on Sunday, seems like a week ago on Sunday against the Chargers. And they kind of made the adjustment with him and Byron left, which at halftime started attacking downfield and made huge plays and came back and won the game. Um, but not everything was was right in the first half, right? Obviously, so th- they're really struggling with um, you know sort of that lack of continuity that they have. You know their identity on offense. It looks like they can run the ball a little bit with Ronald Jones, but with so many injuries. I mean, you know, from Shady McCoy and Leonard Fournette not really playing, and, and Godwin we mentioned. You know, Scotty Miller was out there yesterday, didn't get a target. Didn't make sense. So. I, I think there needs to be, you know, more time, more meeting of the minds, and, you know, eventually they'll get it ironed out. But the other part of this is that the culture of this football team, I mean, you know, they led the league in, in penalties last year, and they're right back there again. And you can't win games with dumb football players. I hate to say it that way, but it's true. And Tom Brady comes from a place where they didn't suffer that for 20 seasons, and now – He's going to figure out why this franchise, for whatever reason, has, you know, has a, a 387 lifetime winning percentage. I mean, you know, these guys have to play more discipline and they haven't done it. Yeah, I, I you know, that was being discussed um, almost as much as the fourth down and the fact that Brady left Foles hanging for a handshake after the game was Brady on the sideline of the game. Um, Mm. being very demonstrative as we're used to seeing him when something's not happening properly on the field. That was, in fact, about the penalties and that one drive where there seemed to be more flags Mm. than an amusement park for the the, uh, Mm -hmm. Bucks. Is that what it was, Rick? Absolutely, yeah. It was, I think they had 55 yards of penalties, not all of them accepted, but that's what the total was, I believe. And, you know, including after the whistle things with head butts and Ryan Jensen, and, you know, that, that, that sort of thing just is intolerable, you know, and you're going to get, you're going to have some bad calls. You know, I mean, look, they, you know, they had a catch 
ruled not a catch that would have maybe, maybe been a touchdown and may have changed that game. Um, they ended up with a field goal, but you know, the things you can control um, and it's the, it's, you know what, it's also the higher price guy. I mean, these are, you know, Donovan Smith makes fourteen and a half million dollars. He had, you know, two false starts and a holding penalty and gave up a couple sacks. Um, you know, Mike Evans got into some post, you know, uh, post whistle stuff. Uh, Ryan Jensen, same thing. I mean, you expect your leaders, as, as you know, coaches tell me that to, to play and set the example and be the guys um, that are being disciplined, so that the younger players follow. And that's not happening right now. And I, I think, I think Brady, you know is going to continue to yell at them and should. Um, but we'll see if, if, if him alone and the coaching staff can change that. Rick Stroud, Tampa Bay Times here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, when when the wins happen, it's all great. And, you know, Arians <laughs> says, no, I'm serious. Arians is like, we would have lost that game last year by 20 and Brady's here and it's great. And then the games in which they lose, we're, we're talking about in game one, uh, after which he uh, said about Brady that one of the interceptions was on him, after which yeah. he basically said it wasn't. And now today you're saying you got to ask Tom. We all knew it was fourth down. Um, right. You think there's going to be any there there about again Arians and Brady or everything truly is as, you know, expected there? What, what can you tell us? What's the you temperature know- on that through five games? It's a, it's a great it's a great question, and I, I don't have a great answer. I, I've talked to coaches, you know, about the, the comments Bruce made about the pick six and things like that, and they tell me Brady, in, in the building at least, never really brought it up. If he was bothered by it, we asked him, and he seemed rather, you know, uh, rather annoyed, um, maybe by the question or whatever, but um, clearly you don't like that. I mean, he didn't get called out you know, uh, by Bill Belichick, at least publicly. And, and we know he did it behind cl- closed doors. Overall, Tom's happy here. Overall, I think this is a breath of fresh air for him. I think he feels like he can breathe. And, and he's got a lot of reasons why he came to Tampa. But we know the number one is to win. And, um, you know, he, it's a new coach. And, and, and Arians is different. And you get the good with the bad. I mean, he'll call all kinds of players out you know, in the media, um, sometimes he'll, he'll do it and then go to them and say, Hey, I just ripped your ass. <laughs> you know? right. And he'll tell them after, after the press conference. And so that's sort of who he is. And I think, you know, Brady would have researched that and talked to Peyton Manning and Ben Roethlisberger and Carson Palmer and would have known that um, by the same token, you don't enjoy it. So, you know, he's going to let Tom have to answer for this one. And frankly, Tom had two chances last night and didn't address it. I mean, it was great block and bridge time for him, but he, he just sort of, you know, well, I, I, you know, I probably should have gone for the first down, you know, went for too much, but he never, but, but I mean, come on, it, when, when you listen, you know, if you have to choose between the audio and the video, believe the video. So uh, let's, let's also hit Gronk here too, Rick, is while we're talking about new situations for Patriots on this team. Uh, first two weeks, he, he was even joking. He was there to block. Uh, he yeah. has been targeted much more and it has had some uh, receptions to the point where it does look like he's alive and he is part of this offense in a manner uh, that that uh, that is significant. Uh, my Gronk uh, whisperer across the way, a longtime Patriot fan and Chris Brockman does not see the same guy in terms of speed and certainly enthusiasm like the guy that would just... Uh, Soak it all in. I know there's no fans in the stands and things of that nature, but what are you seeing out of Gronk? Is he not the same? Is he getting along, coming along? What's the status with him and the way people are observing it? Rick? I mean, I think it's a fair observation. I mean, you know, he took a year out of football, and I think he thought he was done. I think those keys were on the table, you know, and, and you don't normally pick them back up. I've talked to, you know, his dad, uh, Gordy, and he said that he felt like Tom talked – Gronk back into playing again and I mean that that could well be you know and, and I again when you see when you see Gronk every day and you see him in practice he's having fun you know what I mean he's not it's not he's not moping around or anything um, he likes being with the guys he likes being with Tom he likes he likes football he loves football but is he the same athlete is he this does he have the same quick twitch can he get separation I haven't seen it you know I mean you gotta again believe the video I mean I can't believe that Tom Brady wouldn't throw him the ball if he if he was winning. If you know if the coverage took him there, um, he has more faith in, in throwing more t- passes to Gronk than anybody. So, 
you know, I think it's a combination of things. Uh, he's, he's learning, too. You know, this offense is new for him. They've never featured the tight end in this offense. Really, you get some big plays, some big seam routes and things like that, but it's never been a, a high-targeted um, position for Bruce Arians. So all of that mixed in is sort of where we're at with Gronk, right? And, um, you know, the main thing is is that they need him to play tight end and they need him to block and they need him to do these things because, you know, so with the injuries they've had, suddenly he's, he's even more valuable than – than when they got him when he was kind of a luxury piece. Rick Stroud, Tampa Bay Times, two minutes left with him uh, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, Rick, so next up, uh, it only the, the, the curve only gets steeper, um, yeah. not just because the national television eye is going to be glaring right on this team from uh, the next four games. Two of them are Sunday nights, and the uh, one is a Monday night, and then next week is the only one that's not in front of everybody, but it'll be most of the country – because in comes the undefeated Green Bay Packers and their 12 and Aaron Rodgers playing at a very, very high level. And if you want to talk about somebody who could take advantage of the undisciplined, here's a guy who just beat the Atlanta Falcons by getting them to jump off sides with a hard count, using the actual words hard count as his hard count. <laughs> so what do you think uh, is, in fact, the challenge facing this Tampa Bay team for that one? It's enormous. Um, now, you know, I've, I've done this enough, and you have two, Rich, that you know it's an every-week league, right? I mean, right. it's crisis or carnival. When you lose, you may not win another game, and when you win, you could win the Super Bowl. So here come the Green Bay Packers. They're going to have some fans in, in Raymond James Stadium, the most they've had this year. Maybe that will help a little bit. Um, but this is a beat-up football team. The worst thing that happened yesterday, was v- really, other than the loss, Vita was Vita yeah. I mean, this defense has completely changed. He's out for the year with a broken ankle. You know, and now you have Indomitian Sue. The the offensive lines are going to certainly shade to him. That's going to create more problems for Jason Pierre-Paul. Uh, that whole defensive front, the linebackers aren't going to be as free. And this is a high-powered offense coming in here. They got to continue to find a way to stop the run. They just don't have anybody to replace them. And I, I think they're going to struggle a little bit. But um, you know, ten days you get to rest some of those injuries. They got to get healthy. That's the main thing. Can they get Chris Godwin back? Can Mike Evans heal that ankle? Um, can they can they you know clean up some of these penalties and the offensive line play better? So it's not it's not all doom and gloom, but you're right. Those those next games are on national TV. The spotlight is on them, and they start with the Packers and they end that gauntlet with the New Orleans Saints. So this is their season right in front of them. Well, in terms of that, Rick, um, what about Godwin and Fournette? Uh, do we do we expect to get them back full strength? I know Fournette was active last night, but he you know. He kind of yeah. had he had he yeah, kind of had was, a Malcolm Butler activeness, you know, from a Super Bowl a couple <laughs> yeah. years ago. You're wondering why is this person active if we don't see him? So, uh, what about yeah. what about the injuries of players who aren't out for the season for that one as we currently? Yeah, Fournette was the break break class in case of emergency running back, and, right. and I, I think Godwin will make it. He's not going to try to run till Thursday, um, but I do think there's a really good chance that he plays. Mike has played hurt or not hurt, so ten days off will certainly help him. Problem is you can't practice, right? And, and guys don't practice; they're not as sharp. Um, I think Fournette, since he was in uniform, will be in uniform again. Maybe have you know more to do. Although Ronald Jones has taken over at that position a little yes. bit, um, so they'll get some guys back. So that's that's the important thing. And then I guess too, Rick, just to wrap it up, when you know, uh, as as the fault line that we're seeing here, certainly on last night, and it's just one game. I get it, but the fault line that we're seeing here is that. With Aaron Rodgers coming in at 4-0 for Green Bay into Tampa, this is one of those games where Brady and the Patriots would know, okay, we're, game on, and we've got to be at our best, but we're one of the best, and we're going we're gonna to make sure that we're situationally smart as we need to be against this guy, and we're going to be great on offense because we know we can't make any mistakes because of this other guy rarely makes any. And they raise their game up. And it's one of those, you know, heavyweight slobber knockers that, that, that leaves us all thinking this could be for the conference later on. I mean, Brady's been in all those games, but the rest of these teams, the people on this team have not. And the question is, is Brady going to bring him along or is he going to wind up barking at him because they're not matching it? Like, that's the issue here. And this is one of those games that I think can provide the fault line to either get, get larger or maybe fuse a little bit. What do you think? 
Yeah, I think he's going to try to drag them with him. I think it's going to be a, a really, you know, miserable couple of 10 days. And I think that's important for this young football team. And I really do. And, and he said it last night. He goes, you know, if you don't, you know, if, if you're not carrying this with you, there's something wrong with you. And that offensive line had played well. They played horrible. It's all on film. They're embarrassed. They should be embarrassed. And I think you'll get their best effort. And I really do think that they can come back. And, and play the kind of football they played at least the second half or most of that game against the Chargers. So, you know, all that has to happen. Here's the thing. You know, the Bears are a really good defense. We haven't talked about them. Right. You feel them when you're on the field. And, and I don't know that the Packers are as good on defense as, as the Bears were. So I think they'll bounce back. I think, you know, the Sun will maybe be out and, and, and they'll play their best game. And, and Brady does know how to, how to rise to the level for everybody. So that's what he's got to do. That's why he's here. That's why they're – they paid him $50 million, so let's see if he can do it. Rick, appreciate the time and the insight and uh, and the great conversation, as always. We'll check uh, we'll check in and down the road. Maybe after this gauntlet, we'll check back in with you. All right, Rich, any time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Rick Strat, everybody. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm telling you, it's a very popular segment. <laughs> Very pompous segment. We're gonna, Good job, Rick. We're going to do that next. But uh, Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.